good good evening everyone i renu chawla project assistant welcome you all on behalf of anon global foundation for the final presentation session for the 3 weeks internship program offered by anon i am sure all the interns must have had their best of efforts in this 15 days training program and has an extraordinary experience while working on their topics i welcome our jury members Uh, Dr. Jyoti Bajaj. Jyoti Bajaj is a gold medalist and special educator from Lady Irwin College, Delhi University, and gold medalist physiotherapist from <clears throat> Kurukshetra University. She is working as special educator and counselor with DPS Rohini since last five years. She excels in promoting mental health awareness and training, and has conducted several training programs, webinars, and interactive sessions with students, parents, and teachers on the subject. I welcome you, ma'am. And we also have Miss Aparna Sahai, a retired civil servant and an activist, championing the cause of gender equality, good governance, and sustainable development. She has her specialization in environment, gender, education, and governance. Currently, she is serving as secretary, Sandhan, which is Society for Study of Education and Development, a technical resource institution with Pan India presence. She is also a chairman of Sara and Manthan, which is a NGO in Rajasthan involved in social action for rural advancement through natural resource management. i thank both the jury members for their valuable time we have team playground artist with us who will be sharing their ideas on the topic stimulating your life with arts and sports the team is mentored by love kumar sharma and we have adya from madhya pradesh kalyani from maharashtra suwali from delhi and udita from delhi now i request the team to please come forward and kindly start the presentation okay should we wait or can we just start i'll just check uh, i think you can start love and uh, she can just join okay ma'am can we just get the permission to present the ppt uh adya yada wants to share the ppt okay now check warnings to the respected jury members and my fellow teammates Special thanks to Anand Global Foundation and YWCA India for providing us with this opportunity. I am Love Kumar Sharma, mentor of Team Playground Artists. My team consists of four girls, namely Adya Yadav, Kalyani Sawalke, Suvali Biswal, and Udita Das. And today we will be presenting on the topic stimulation of life with arts and sports. Now, with this short introduction, I request my team to please start off with the presentation. your mind emotions and body are instruments and the way you align and tune them determines how well you play life that is indeed true with this beautiful quote let us commence what is stimulation and how is it one with arts and sports stimulation is the encouragement of development cause of activity when one stimulates their life with creativity in any form whether it be art or sports one develops both physical and emotional range and tolerance needed in life it is a very significant in brain development in the early stages of life and equally necessary when one takes up due to cause of adulthood art is present in everything and is everywhere and sports is much more than physical wellness 
act of, the act of creating conditions similar to those believed to be present actually. For example, press provides simulation of political discourse. An interesting or fun activity can be described as stimulating regardless of its physical effects as well. Now to continue with the presentation, we provide you an overview of what will come next. Firstly, we start with what happens when one stimulates life with arts and sports, or in other words, the impact of creative stimulation. Next, we look to the sphere of creative stimulation via three main bullet points. Firstly, we study the anecdotes and the stories of various people involved in creative stimulation. Then we look up to the maintenance of health and lastly, we talk about a social dilemma. Then we proceed to our survey synthesis and present to you our findings of the survey that we had conducted. And then at last, we present to you a ballot of creativity. Gateway of creativity and discipline. Now I'm sure art is the only thing which helps us see and explore creativity. And I don't think it's a lie that sport means discipline. Art can be defined as a diverse range of human activities involving the creation of visual or auditory, which express the creator's imagination, conceptual ideas, or technical skills, intended to be appreciated primarily for the beauty or emotional power. Effects of arts on health extend to clinical and non-clinical populations and physical and mental health. For example, a number of studies evidence the health benefits of music, both for the general population and for the stroke victims. Studies in general testify that cultural participation can lead to social relationships and make communities feel safer and stronger. Philosophically, art is not an action or an object, but an internal appreciation of balance and harmony, and therefore an aspect of being human beyond utility. Art is a way of communication as it provides means to express the imagination. Now here's a question. Have you ever done swimming or say football, badminton by chance, or any sport at all? I bet most of us have. But sports are more than some activity involving physical exertion, which requires skills or in which we compete against each other. For many of us around the world, sports are immediately tied to the notion of childhood. According to UNICEF, through sports, children explore, invent, and create. They also develop social skills. Moreover, sport is a good entry point for the promotion of life skills-based education, including the values of physical fitness, proper nutrition, and how to make choices that positively impact your health. I, myself, have been learning karate since eight years, as a result of which I'm a black belt in the same and have been a silver medalist for three consecutive years in the nationals in my respective age and weight category. I've even achieved a scholarship worth rupees two lakh by Delhi government. Sports aren't limited to an interest, hobby, or just a regular activity to stay fit either. They also have some powerful career options if you're dedicated enough. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to say that nothing shapes a human better than either playing once in a while or having a whole life lived for sports. A detailed study is necessary for anything. So we proceed with the same in creative stimulation. And we look up to some points. Firstly, we study from a winner's view of what is stimulation and how can it be involved in creative ways. Then we study the anecdotes. Then after that, we study the maintenance of peace, health, and stability via creativity. And lastly, we present to you the social dilemma or the experiments which were carried out to highlight the above notion of creative stimulation. From a winner's view, sports have changed attitudes and culture in ways that seem subtle, but ultimately made us think differently about ourselves and who we are, said by Barack Obama, ex-president of the United States. Much more than just performance, sport is synonymous with education and responsibility. It teaches young people strong values that help them grow, said by Panila Webak, one of the most successful alpine ski racers of the 1990s. 
Now to study our stories, we look up to two main different points. Firstly, we look up to creative therapy, and then we proceed to the development of life skills via creative stimulation. Creative healing. As the name suggests, I'm going to be telling how being creative heals our body, soul, and mental state alike by using the examples of commonly practiced arts. What better way than to start with cooking and baking? We all might not do it, but surely we indulge in those heavenly baked goods. Cooking and baking present two different aspects of mental health the activity itself, and the result. Psychologists told Eater in 2014 that the reason that therapeutic baking courses work so well is because participants get something tangible for their efforts. This is called behavioral activation, which means finding meaning in the things you do rather than drifting through them. The benefit of the process of cooking is partially the fact that it results in tasty food, a good reward for doing a task it demonstrates that our actions have resulted into something real. Tell me, have we not at least had one phases in our life where we were obsessed with this one music genre or we couldn't stop listening to this one band? Music therapy includes listening to music or creating music with instruments of all types. It may also involve singing or moving to it. This therapy reduces stress and produces promotes relaxation. It has shown to be more effective than prescription drugs and combined with traditional care, it can also reduce pain after spinal, spinal sur surgery. Music therapy can use deep physical reactions the body has to music to help people with mental health conditions. The way that music affects the brain is quite complex. All aspects of music, including pitch, tempo, and melody, are processed by different areas of the brain. For instance, the cerebellum processes the rhythm. The frontal lobe decodes the emotional signals created by the music, and a small portion of the right temporal lobe helps understand the pitch. And of course, since I've covered music, next I'll be moving on to dance. More commonly known as DMT, dance movement therapy, it uses movement and dance to support intellectual, emotional, and motor functions of the body. Research has found that using dance movements as a form of therapy activates several brain functions at once, kinesthetic, rational, musical, and emotional. This type of movement requires mental, physical, and emotional strength to work simultaneously. The creative expressions of dance therapy can bolster communication skill and inspire dynamic relationships. It is commonly used to treat physical, psychological, cognitive, and social issues such as chronic pain, childhood obesity, cancer, arthritis, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, anxiety, depression, disordered eating, poor self-esteem, trauma, dementia, communication issues, and even family conflicts. Now here we present a stop motion video created by me which will explain our topic even further. The video is actually not audible, they can just increase the volume. It is said that sometimes you change your mind and sometimes your mind changes you. It is indeed true. Here we present a small story of four girls who took a small step of changing their mind with the help of art and sports and ended up changing their lifestyle. Here is the story of Arthya. Pehle kaam, fir aram. But I didn't know what I should do about the aram part once I was done with the calm. I usually spent my time surfing the internet. One day, I came across this wonderful video about the life of a poet and it got me interested in the art of writing poetry. And since then, it, po writing poetry has been my own safe word. Next story is Apojita. my 
find chess as much. I see that the people with lots of experience of playing chess have developed thinking abilities in two areas. Therefore, I have the lovely ability to consider new things and problems and new experience to solve them. And also, my processing speed has increased and thus leads me to respond efficiently to challenges. This is how I excel in everything I do just by applying every ability that I learn from chess. It has also helped me to improve my symptoms of ADHD and also it also helps me to get off my anxiety. Now comes the story of Kalyani. But the days when I used to come back home from school and just lying on my bed doing nothing. I had slight problem in my back and neck. As we used to sit at one place in school, there were not many physical activities at school. I really wished to get involved in some kind of sports or activities which were necessary to get rid of my daily routine problem. One day I was reading the newspaper. I saw one headline about Taekwondo. There are so many articles regarding Taekwondo. I really got fascinated and joined the Taekwondo Academy from that day. My routine changed. I felt much more better and happier than before. And finally, the story of Surabi. Now, I remember being in 8th grade and it was not a good year. Assignments, activities, exams, just one schedule for every day. You go to school, school's over, go home, study and wake up for schooling again next day. I had zero motivation to do anything and I hated every day. I tried a lot of things but nothing would motivate me but one fine day. I just really wasn't in a mood for math I guess and I flipped to the last page of my register and I noticed that when I'm bored I actually tend to draw a lot. But then I decided why not make it an actual hobby. Since then every day I would take out at least some time for a fine drawing and now I know that's just what I needed. These were two short stories which conveyed how one can make their life a little beautiful and creative as creativity is a natural extension of our enthusiasm. Life skills, developmental benefits. They are playing sports. Children learn to lose. Being a loser, being a good loser, takes maturity and practice. Losing teaches children to bounce back from disappointment. Cope with unpleasant experiences and is an important part of becoming resilient. Playing sport helps children learn to control their emotions and channel negative feelings in a positive way. It also helps children to develop patience and understand that it can take a lot of practice to improve both their physical skills and what they do in school. Social benefits. Playing helps children to develop many of the social skills they will need, need for life. It teaches them to cooperate, to be less selfish, and to listen to other children. It also gives children uh, senses of belonging. It helps them make new friends and builds their social circle outside school. An important part of playing in a team is accepting dis discipline. Playing sports means children are expe ex expected to follow rules expect decisions and understand that they could be penalized for bad behavior. It teaches them to take directions from the coach, the priest and other adults. Sports also teaches them about teamwork, emotional benefits. Physical activity has been shown to stimulate chemicals in the brain uh, that make you feel better. So you, so playing sport regularly improves children's overall emotional well-being. Research shows there is a link between playing sports and self-esteem in children. It supports of the team, a kind word from a coach, or achieving their personal best will all help children to feel better about themselves. Sports isn't just good for children's bodies, it's good for their minds too.
I learned that the true meaning of being healthy is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. We all know that sports help us in weight management. They also help our bones and muscles. They also reduce chances of certain cancers and other diseases, giving us a longer life. But did you know, in one studies, researchers found that those who got regular vigorous exercise were 25% less likely to develop depression or anxiety disorders over the next five years. Exercise improves health by reducing anxiety, depression, and negative mood, and by improving self-esteem and cognitive functions of the brain. Exercise has also been found to alleviate symptoms such as low self-esteem and social withdrawal. That is all simply because sports exercise releases endorphins. A group of hormones secreted within the brain and nervous system having a number of psychological functions. It helps one deal with stress and reduces the feeling of pain. Now, that is not a happy juice. That is, as we all know, dopamine. The pleasure effect associated with endorphins is actually due to the increased dopamine production that occurs due to endorphin activity. A fun fact, the term athlete's high is used for a state of great pleasure attained after a very high amount of exercise. And yes, it is very similar to being on drugs. Thus, the name. I don't know how many of us have heard of it, but art therapy is a technique rooted in the idea that creative expression can foster healing and mental well-being. And some studies have found that art therapy can increase self-esteem, reduce negative symptoms, and reduce social and emotional withdrawal in people with schizophrenia. Here's an anecdote by Robin Spodek, shared on Tumblr, describing the desire and struggles of being an art therapist. Now, how they help people with being who they are. I'm an art therapist. As I continued down the path of what I will be when I grow up, I became more and more in love with what I was studying, who I was talking to, and what I was doing. Yes, even my mother began to see that I might actually be able to make a living one day. I think this is why when people scoff and joke about art therapy, I'm unfazed. I mean, I get it. It's a little out there. But when my father said to me, as long as you are happy, when I told him I was changing paths, it all changed for me. And yes, I am happy. Helping children and teens makes me happy. You may not be able to understand what I do and why I do, but that's not important. This is what I try to instill in every child I see. Do what you love, create your own happiness. That's my happiness. I also I achieve my dream. No, I'm not a doctor, but I am helping sick children. Does it matter more to you if I say that I helped a 10 year old boy cope with the fact that he's dying from a disease? Or that I took a once suicidal teenage girl who could not say one nice thing about herself and helped her build self-esteem so that she would she could speak in front of anyone, anywhere. Or should I mention the five-year-old boy who didn't speak due to years of abuse and now he's playing and enjoying being a kid? But that's not what I say. And someone asks, art therapy, what is that? Does that really work? I answer with total confidence. Well, it works for me and it has worked for the families I've helped. I'm a psychotherapist. Yes, indeed. But I replace the couch with a sand tray and the coffee table with an easel. Now we proceed to the social science of creativity. Um, if something as simple as an apple falling on Newton's head could create something so diverse as a subject known as gravity. Only think two people having a conversation, it does not matter whether it's optimistic, pessimistic or neutral, can have a science of its own. So we take this social science of creativity and explain it via some bullet points. We look into psychology at sports, then we look into intuition, varied perspectives and questioning and answering society. Psychology. Psychology is in very layman terms in reference to this uh, social experiment is to measure brain activity and how one reacts to one thing. So this social experiment was carried out between two different kinds of people. There were professional athletes 
and amateur school teams of people who played team sports like hockey, cricket, and the professional athletes played individual sports like swimming and archery. They did not involve in teams. So we studied the brain activities. The people who conducted this study had studied the brain activities of these people. And there was a very, very surprising result. They say, that when you do something without social involvement, without other people looking at you, without other people contributing to you, your brain activity is much more less than what it is in the opposite situation. Your brain activity almost becomes a monotonous one. And therefore, when we study these people's brains, when they were training without assistance, just morning practice, evening practice, whatever they wanted to practice, were just doing it in one mind way. They were not looking into other varied aspects. They were just practicing, picking up the bow, attacking the target, picking up the bow, attacking the target, being monotonous. Endorphin activity was low. And their brains overall did not really treat it as something very enjoyable or something very not enjoyable but there is a very contrasting result to amateur school teams like the ones who third graders and fourth graders the surprising result was that when children play together when people be together when people do anything together they respond better they say that you're collectively won something or you're collectively lost something and this has resulted in better brain activity the people who were studying them can coined it as a healthy brain activity. Endorphins were good. And they also, they were more active and looking into various perspectives of what they were doing. So this has to, this has one conclusion that we can dwell on both. We can say that monotonous activity most probably comes when we do it over and over again without some comments, without some appreciation or anything. But when we do something together, when we are in the team, we enjoy it more. So here are some collection of bullet points that were made after this study. It says that it's good for the both the body and the mind. It stimulates pain and pleasure hormones called endorphins. It provides both long and short term society and individual effects. And it teaches them a formula. Training plus failure equals a growth mindset. You train and train, you train and train, you learn more things. You fail and fail and fail and fail, you learn more things. And that's how you grow. That's how you build new parts of yourself. And it teaches us to be and create a supportive community of where we pull each other together upwards. Now, here is an interesting activity. Um, Aparna, ma'am, may I take the liberty to ask you a question? Yeah, please go on. Okay. Ma'am, if I were to say that you have to draw this potted plant, if you see there, do you see the potted plant there? Yeah, I do. Ma'am, if I were to say, and you say that you have like very less time and you just have to draw it, but it should be exactly the same. Will you be able to do it? Exactly the same. Yeah, Almost I want you to the make same. it. Yeah. Uh, exactly the same, possibly no, but almost same, yeah. Okay. Depending on the time. You said yeah, the exactly. time is limited. Exactly. You're time given is, a time yeah. slot. You're given a time slot of our like one hour or something like that, that you have to draw this. So, okay, we agree. And I think the social experiment which was carried out, the many people answered the same that they, they really can't do it. Some people just gave up in like one go that we <clears> can't draw this plant. So now I ask you one thing. If you were to draw this plant, would you start with the leaves or the pot? Like you were to draw something like in shapes, you were to say that the pot is round, the leaves are in elliptical shape. You were to say like that, wouldn't you? Uh, well, I wouldn't say where would I start because you know, huh. this is art and this yeah. is creativity. I can start from anywhere. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah? ma yeah. No, ma'am. I'm not saying that you have to start from anywhere. You have to see like you have to identify shapes. You have to that the leaf looks like this. The pot is in this shape. So, yes. ma'am, this yes. is how we rationalize things. We are trying to look into the perspective that we have been taught since we were kids. A circle is looks like this. A square looks like this. A rectangle looks like this. Now, can I proceed to the next slide, please? <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, ma'am. What do you see in this photo? What do you see? It's there's a garden, there's a hand, there's a butterfly. Okay, let's Flowers? stop at the butterfly. Yeah. Let's stop at the butterfly. That's a butterfly. That's a pretty butterfly. This word is a butterfly. I want you to imagine it in a different way. This just cannot be this thing. It cannot be that insect with beautiful wings. Jyoti, ma'am, if you may take the liberty, you can also answer if you have any. 
I'm supposed to think of a butterfly, but not this but butterfly. But not right? butterfly. But like, just not to have to be an insect with beautiful wings or like moths and everything. Not in the scientific way. What do you think uh, a butterfly can be? I, I, I would think of butter separately and fly separately. Ma'am, you can think it in any way. Like, but you have to think something. Just create something out of your mind. Create something. Use a different perspective. I can think of wings. I can think of flying. I can think of liberty. I can think of beauty. Those are the words that are instantly coming to my mind. Okay, ma'am. Uh, may I uh, present the next? What about this? <laughs> I said that. <laughs> this is a butter. This is a stick of butter which has wings. It can fly. It's a butterfly. Perspective. I looked at it in a different way. Society did not teach me to look at it in a different way. Okay, example for this. This is sea glass. It's um, found in beaches when the rocks get weathered and everything. Now imagine if sea glass was something else. If I didn't tell you that this is sea glass, what can sea glass be? It can be a piece of glass floating in the sea. It's still sea glass. So it's perspective. Wonderful. It has taught us to look in a different way, to use art as a language to communicate, to use it to teach people that you cannot look the same rectangle in one thing. This can be a box, that can be a phone. You'd never know. So let's proceed to the next slide. It is a very simple activity, questioning and answering. We have always done it as students, as teachers, everybody questions. You have to ask a question, you have to answer the question. So we did the same and we tried to expand our idea of creativity and arts and simulation. So these are the questions. Um, I would like, I would appreciate if you take a minute and read these questions once, um, then we can proceed to the answers. Ma'am, I hope you have read the questions. Can we proceed to the answers? Yes. Okay, ma'am. So here is a cumulative sheet of answers. These um, questions were asked to like college campus students and teachers that studied there. So they have their perspective to answer the same. So firstly, we see that sports and arts are important to society. It's almost a conscience of it. You cannot express yourself if you do not have any creative medium. And everything is dependent on perspective. And sometimes people see it as an icing to the cake that you are creative, that's okay. It's the second best thing you can do. But it's important because it's the flour to the bread. You cannot stand society without you having been creative. If you do not have art, literature, language, anything, how do you express yourself? How do you express science? How do you write those scientific journals? And then we see that it does highlight the society and art and sports are important. They all are interdependent. So now we proceed to the next slide. So we present our survey synthesis here. This was a survey that we carried out via Google Forms. And um, so let's... Kalani, um, okay, I'll survey synthesis. Here we present our findings. Okay, so now we look into our surveys. So firstly, the two pie charts highlight our age and gender that we have surveyed. Firstly, we see that our surveyed audience mostly was from the age group of the adolescents or 12 to 18 years of age. And many of our surveyed audience identify female as in gender. A public eye of sports or in general terms, how do public, how does a public opinion of sports form? So we asked two questions here. Why do you play sports? And why do you think to indulge in an regular physical activity on a daily basis? We have questioned two main things here. We have questioned want, we have questioned interest, we have questioned something very core to us. And we have also questioned time. Time is fundamental to all of us. We all look at the clock to well monitor our day. So we have asked, 
that why do you play sports? Is it for enjoyment? Many people agree that same. Many people say I have a profession based on it. And many people say just to stay fit, to keep myself in shape, to be physically active. And then to indulge in sports in daily activity, many people do take it as a disciplined activity, daily basis, every day, whenever possible. Some people do not do it regularly, but they do indulge in some. So that takes up the notion that absolutely nobody indulges in sports. Ma'am, careers are important, don't you think, in the 21st century? Do you think one's profession and what one achieves is very fundamentally um, judged by the career one takes, ma'am, do you think? Exactly, yeah. Yes, ma'am. So again, we also question the same here, that we ask, we inculcate the creativity and the one of the fundamental things of professions in one, two questions here. We ask that, do you think are profitable? Do you think arts and sports careers are profitable? And many people agree to the same that it is that the society is again based on them. So how is it not important? And then we ask that, does it affect your growth? Do you use it as a medium to grow in your profession? They do again. And that's how we keep on reprimanding the same notion that creativity cannot mean achievement. We see that society has involved creativity in so many aspects nowadays that everything involves arts and sports. Mental health. Mental health, one of the most discussed topics of the century, it is important to have discussions with the same and remove all taboos, art and sports are fundamental to most seeing the above synthesis and so will help us manage the taboos and maintain the peace. Our survey audience were profusely agreed to the notion and see it as one of the fundamentals of a good mentally healthy society. Ma'am, here is one more question, if you do not mind. Um, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself. You have to, and I'll give you an example, like, hi, my name is Udita. I am this year's old. I study here. I am in class 10, everything like that. But I want you to deprive of all of these things. Do not use your name. Do not use your ethnicity. Do not use your race. Do not use anything that you have accepted socially, that people have given to you. you express yourself, what you like, what you dislike. Ma'am, any answers? Don't use the name. Just don't use anything that you have been given socially. I am a creative person and I like drawing and I like music. Ma'am, see here, what did you see here? Ma'am, I asked you, what did you like? What are you from the core, from your very human roots? So we have asked, what is your nature? How do you think it's related to arts and sports? So we have questioned here, and obviously questioning is important in society, is that do you think arts and sports affect your personality? And many people agree that it does. And if many people say that, Will it be different if you were to be devoid of the same? If there was no medium or channel to express yourself, if you had no sports to play, if you had no art and creativity to do, would you think you would be different? <laughs> Obviously, you would be because you have nothing to express yourself now. You are devoid of the same. And this is important, seeing how much our society needs it, self-expression and autonomy. Odita, unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I would like to present a small poem that I wrote inspired by the talented people I worked with in the duration of this internship. Art, the expression of life itself, embodiment of human strife. It's a place where emotions collide. Presented are vague ideas. Their deciphered meaning is each of its own. Yet the different tales all tell the same song in the same tone. Some of hope and some of grief. It's here 
where all ideas, thoughts, and emotions of ours materialize and meet. Untangle the mess in your head, put it on paper instead, or put it on stage. With graceful movements, tell of that which is felt by one and every. You and I might be different, but we all feel the same. That is why expression of oneself, art is the expression of life itself. Now with this short poem, we would like to conclude our presentation. We would like to thank each and every one of you present here for listening to our sincere presentation attentively. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please stop sharing the screen. Thank you, team Playground Artist, for this wonderful presentation. Now, I would like to request Aparna ma'am to share her views regarding the presentation and move, move on with the question answer round. Congratulations. It was an excellent presentation and Budita, you caught us uh, at the right moment, you know, it was a wonderful style of presentation asking us questions and these questions, simple questions, but they touched the core. And well, uh, the subject is, um, I would say challenging, stimulating your life with arts and sports. Most of you, all of you are students. And, you know, while you are studying art and sports are marginalized. I remember in my days, I also remember my children's days, Days, you know, people who were in sports, they were kind of in fringes, they were out of the class. They were not in the mainstream education. Similarly, those uh, who were good in arts, music, dance, so they were not considered to be academics. Um, I wouldn't call them outcasts, but nevertheless, you know, people didn't have any special hopes from them. And if you are in the limelight, it makes a difference that, well, he is or she is an excellent sportsman, uh, an athlete, or a singer par excellence. Nowadays, you get opportunities on the television also. There are other um, places also uh, which organize such um, uh, competitions or you get recognition. But by and large, you know, as you go down, you know, bigger cities, smaller cities, the opportunities become less and less. And children are truly challenged and it really affects their personality. My question here is, do you think, and in that case, well, uh, uh, in your milieu, in your school, in your community, in your family, um, are sports people and artists, the musicians, uh, they are given the same kind of uh, uh, importance as somebody who's excelling in academics? This is my first question, you know, because I've seen, I've been, I, I'm not an educator myself, but I am an educational administrator. And I was director of education and those days we took up this uh, program of uh, school development. And the buildings were yellow and the doors were, um, you know, a faint uh, blue kind of a thing. It was very uninspiring place. And we thought that we should ask children what kind of classrooms they wanted. And they said, well, we want colorful classrooms. We want red doors. We want blue windows. And we want black blackboards, which are green or red, or we can write on them. So we did the buildings just me char foot tak niche tak humne is tarah se paint kiya ki bacche chalk se usme kuch likh sakte the kar sakte the so that kind of including art in education was very important for small children otherwise books can be very very uninspiring and very intimidating so that is another question of mine that in the classroom i mean sports and arts are they separate from your education or can they be part of your education so one thing, are you given the similar importance as a, as a creative uh, sports person or an artist? And second thing, is education as exciting or could education be exciting if these two could be included? If I say about my personal life, I would say yes, my family is very supportive and uh, my brother would like to do something in academics while I want to pursue design, but they support us both the same. And the relatives that I'm close with, 
they will obviously also support my life choices and they actually say that academics arts and sports actually go hand in hand and my dad loves sports so that has never been a problem in my house to express yourself or maybe you like something that most people don't that has never been a problem in my school also i'll say i've been to a few schools actually because we move around a lot so i only remember two mainly and i can compare them one of them was in a small town in named guna and their art sports and music was an hour activity after that if you have anything related to it no teacher would allow it everybody would be like oh my god that's not important but here in my present school they are given the same weightage as that if you're really good at sports your teachers would always support you they will always be there in fact they give us so many opportunities for that like you said in your time it was not so people spoke and they said it's not good yet yeah, yes there are still people like that but i believe that things have changed quite a bit because i i have felt that right now people you know encourage you to do what you want it is a society which is promoting individualism it's like yes you want to do that you want to do something nobody wants to do go ahead we'll be there and we'll support you as society has changed thank you good Uh, if i were to add some points in this question can i sure yeah yes so i also wanted to answer the previous question so i would like to take an example if i sing a song for example then then i know there are some people around me who would really motivate me so much i know i don't sing that much well but there are people who motivate me they say me yaar tu youtube channel kyun nahi khol leta yaar tu classical singing kyun nahi shuru kar deta but i know that i am not that much well but there are people to encourage me on the other hand no such people too who are really very good at something for example i know a friend who is very much good at cricket as i as i am seeing him but uh, for example that that was really matlab mere samne sab cheeze ho rahi thi what i was seeing ki uh, there was some teacher who asked him ki aur beta tumhare kya hal chal i mean he passed 10th obviously and then afterwards we were to meet the teachers one day then uh, they asked aur beta kya kya hal chal hai tumhare we said yes ma'am we are all right i said ma'am i am pursuing engineering with a very good fantastic that's very nice he said ma'am i want to pursue cricket and i am just seeing towards that i am just going to that part but uh, but the teacher was like ki ha wo sab to theek hai lekin padhai mein kya karoge tum wo sab to theek hai na side mein chalti rahengi padhai mein tum kya karoge so i wanted to say that that there are mixed reactions at uh, so it depends obviously personally from person to person but i highly believe that the generation like us now we would be coming up further so i highly believe that this scenario would be changed upside down so yeah this was my view i wanted to add this to that good thank you thank you ma'am for your enlightening words jyoti ma'am please share your views regarding the presentation and any question you would like to ask from our interns yeah thank you thank you renu uh, aparna ma'am i would also like to uh, say something on what we were discussing just now we do see a paradigm shift you know still we have a long journey to accomplish but there is an attitudinal change which we can see now i deal with children with special needs and uh, most of my kids they drop science and maths when they reach class 9 and we you know right from the very beginning we definitely encourage our children to have interest in one of the senses which they think you know is more developed than them most right. of my students they choose either oh. art or music and right. so many of my students have done their graduation in instrumental music or bharatnatyam dance or other forms of dances in music so uh, i don't know i don't say that is the only option they have but we see that enthusiasm not only in the children but also in the parents and yes the new education policy exactly. the national education policy exactly that's what i was saying that is it yeah uh, which is which is going to be implemented you know maybe from this concession has given uh, too many broad options for the children also to you know pick up any subject combination that they like not binding them to those conventional streams which we had you know when we were children my own brother had to choose between cricket and engineering and that time around 15 20 years back you know i i, I could see my parents going by the conventional way क्रिकेट खेल लो बट करियर का क्या होगा तो दैट वॉज देन बट आई थिंक द टाइम इज चेंजिंग यू नो दो दो वी स्टिल हैव यू नो सम मोर सम ऑब्स्टिकल्स टू क्रॉस बट येस द टाइम इज चेंजिंग 
coming to the presentation wonderful presentation beautiful topic and uh, you know i i really think uh, the key takeaway which you've taken now from your presentation from your research is children develop one hobby something that you're interested in this is going to help you a lot later in life maybe you know today you would say you don't have time but tomorrow when you have time you may run out of options so now that you have so many options so many resources available around you develop one hobby be it something as simple as reading books drawing coloring dancing music anything anything but choose one hobby have something to express like uh, uh, she was saying very rightly you know how would you express if you did not you know have any creative thing around you actually this is a very very important way of expression my question to you children is i was in fact looking uh, you know this point somewhere in your presentation also in the current scenario it's almost been like uh, you know almost one year that we are stuck in this pandemic what advice would you give to you know your friends out there to still keep uh, this creative balance alive you know any any way you think or you would have practiced in this current scenario which you think is the way to keep uh, the creative element in your life um uh, may i take the question answer please uditha go ahead yes ma'am ma'am so i'll say somewhat from my personal experience my mom and dad have always told me that i'm very good at sketching that i can draw very well but i really enjoy history history is one of my favorite subjects so ma'am this one day i started in thinking that why cannot inculcate the both of the same thing why do i not write something why do not express something in my view in opposition so if i were to have to advise somebody to keep yourself alive i just say one word variety is the spice of life you need to add six you need to add at least three spices to make that dish flavorful you need to make your life flavorful you cannot live in monotony you cannot do one thing the entire day do you like writing sitting and writing the entire day no you like to get up you like to look the fresh air you like to watch tv that's creative that's creativity so you have to keep variety you have to make yourself multi dimensional and that's a, that's the only thing i'll say i'll say variety is the spice of life make your life flavorful end of story great i would like to share one experience uh, you know before uh, we end this presentation uh, one of the child i i came across uh, he had some disability which was not diagnosed until then one day one day what he did uh, he, he there was some you know paint going on in the house he took a black paint box he went inside the bathroom and he locked himself up you know the parents kept banging at the door they kept knocking but you know uh, there was no response and after 15 minutes when he finally opened the door he had painted all the walls black and that was the first cue which we had to understand that there was a huge turmoil inside him but he could not express he was not good at expression so that is when we caught hold of him and you know we started dealing with him using art therapy using a way again to express what he was thinking what were his ideas what were his feelings and it's almost been 4 to 5 years now he's pretty settled when it comes to expressing his emotions so yes right you said uta variety is the spice of life you must have options open to you learn to express learn to be creative it's very important to be smart thank you we could have gone on and on on this uh, but time is limited and um, well you had a lot to tell us but uh, the new education policy as jyoti said it it gives you options you know you opt for science but you can also take music along with that uh, at one point of time i was a science student i wanted to study sanskrit but that option was not available now you can opt for that you can take maths and you can learn music or philosophy or whatever so wish you all the best keep the interest up and well it was very nice thank, thank you, you ma'am thank you ma'am Uh, thank you ma'am for your inspiring words once again i want to thank our jury members mentor and anon team for this delightful evening and your valuable time for this wonderful session stay home stay safe thank you thank you everyone bye thank you everyone thank you you all can leave we have the